Hello, Sebastian Lacito here, and welcome to 5-Minute Fresh Start. I'm in Genesis chapter 18, verse 22. It says, Then the men, these are angels, turned away from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham uh, still stood before the Lord. <clears throat> so God, the Lord Jesus, uh, has basically told Abraham that he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Abraham has a vested interest in Sodom and Gomorrah, and that Lot and his family live there. And so this gives uh, this information from God of what he's going to do in the earth allowed Abraham now to intercede for his family. God gives us that information a lot of times so that we can make intercession. And Abraham came near, verse 23, and said, Would you, would you, God, also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for 50 righteous? that are in it, far be it from you such things as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked, far be it from you, shall not the judge of the earth do right. I mean, and so now we begin to learn a couple of things. One is I want you to see the lack of shame. You know, he feels he belongs there. He feels he can talk to God this way. <clears throat> he leans on God's nature. He said, be it far from you. In other words, this, this isn't something that you would do. You would not destroy the wicked with the righteous. You wouldn't let the wicked, you wouldn't let the righteous experience your judgment with the wicked. This isn't you, God. I know it's not you. Wouldn't you spare the city for 50 people? So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, indeed, now I am who I am just but dust and ashes and have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose that there's five less than 50 righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for the lack of five? He said, if I find 45, I will not destroy the city. And he, he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose that there should be 40 found there. He said, I will not destroy it if I find 40. He said, then, then he said, let not the Lord be angry I will speak. Suppose that 30 should be found there. So he said to him, I will not destroy it if I find 30. He said, indeed, I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose that there's 20 should be found there. He said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, but I will speak once more this last time. Suppose 10 should be found there. He said, I will not destroy it if for the ten's sake. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. We see a bunch of things here. Number one, you know, we see that, that God gives information to his covenant people so that they can prepare themselves, like in the end times, prepare ourselves, but also intercede because we know things are coming. He allows Abraham to do that because he gives them the information. But Abraham, I, we need to see this because because of covenant, he felt like he belonged there. He, he didn't feel any shame. He felt comfortable. He felt like he could push him like a father. He had no shame. He was persistent until he got to his goal of 10 because that's all he cared about. He leaned on God's nature. You know, you're merciful. You always do what's right. Sell the judge of the world, not do what's right. This isn't your nature. He said, be it far from you. Shall the judge of the earth not do right? Abraham's lack of shame counts down from 50 to 10, because 10 is really what he cares about. Abraham cared uh, about his family and was persistent until God promised not to hurt his family or destroy his family. So what about us? What about us? Or do we feel shameful when we go before the Lord? Do we feel like we belong? Do we feel like we can push God? Do we feel like we can lean on God's nature? We're sons of God. We have a higher covenant even than Abraham. Even though Abraham established the covenant, he wasn't a son of God like we are. And, and so we need to learn how to have a lack, a lack of shame and ask God for what we need and push him, push him, lean on his nature, push him. He didn't get angry at him. He, he continued to, to count down with him until now God knew what his goal was. His goal was Lot, right? So anyway, that's our broadcast for today. Thank you for watching, number one. Thank you for allowing us to join you on your journey to know God and his word. 
we have plenty of uh, uh, ministry uh, programs or messages. Every week we have 11 video messages, 17 if you count the one minute, one verse on Instagram. You know, please uh, share this with family and friends. Please uh, look at the other ministry tools that we have. We have curriculums and workbooks and all kinds of things. They're all free. They're paid for by our partners, those giving us uh, 10, 20, 50, $100 or more a month. Uh, and pray about becoming a partner. See if the Holy Spirit moves on your heart to join us uh, for um, some amount of money to help us. And then uh, aside from that, if you have prayer requests, send us an email. We have a prayer team. We've had a lot of success, lots of answered prayer. Uh, and uh, we, we, we love to not only walk with you on your journey to know God, but also help you fight off and, and get delivered and, and set free and healed and whatever else you might need. Anyway, God bless you guys. I love you and have a great, great day. Thanks for watching.